So, uh, good morning in the US and good evening, quite late in China. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, my name is Ali Rahim. I'm the director of the Advanced Architectural Design Program at the Weizmann School of Design at the University of Pennsylvania. The AAD program, as we call it, uh, is hosting a series of talks titled Building Experts. And what we are referring to is the people that you meet through these conversations are experts in their field uh, in the discipline of architecture. Uh, in addition to that, we really aspire to building experts within our program. So um, there are six talks in total. We, this will be our fourth talk. Uh, we have started with Preston Scott Cohen, followed that up with Nadera Tehrani, uh, and then last week was Patrick Schumacher. And today I'm very, very excited to present to you Shu uh, Wei Guo, who I've known for many, many years. Um, and to follow him come Rosanna Hu from Neri and Hu Architects in Shanghai, and Zhu Pei, uh, who's Zhu Pei Architects, who's doing interesting work, in addition to him being the Dean at CAFA, which is the China Academy of Fine Arts. So let me just um, preface this by saying that uh, it's, it's very interesting that Shu uh, Wei Guo has been the chair at Tsinghua University and the link I should, I was a little remiss about pointing out the link between Patrick Schumacher and Penn, but I don't want to miss this opportunity to just say that uh, Tsinghua University was started by two Penn graduates uh, uh, Lian Si Cheng and Lin Hui. And this relationship with Tsinghua has gone back for a century. Um, and I think we've been very close institutionally, uh, but also personally. Um, with uh, Shu, I've known Professor Shu for over 20 years. And it's been a great uh, sort of collaboration along the way. Uh, and what I, why I'm trying to equivocate Lin Hui and Lian Zichan with Professor Xu is that Professor Xu was the first one to bring technology in a major way into the discipline and the academy to rethink and reshape architectural design. So, um, you know, and I, and I always have wanted the opportunity to present him as that. Uh, and I know that, you know, as in every everything that's imported into a country, particularly as large as China, I find that Professor Xu has really been focused on particular things. And then there are other schools that picked up on it, such as Tsinghua, and then later on, Scott, you know, South China University of Technology, et cetera. But he's really been the leader um, through many, many different means uh, in the academy, in his practice, et cetera. And you'll see that today. Um, he is currently, um, now the, the sort of the executive dean of the Future Human Habitats Research Institute at Tsinghua University in Shenzhen, which is just starting up. Uh, and he's director of his own office, Dada, uh, in Beijing. So um, why is Professor Xu part of the series? You know, he's a, he's a building expert. And like I just explained, he has been active internationally in the field, particularly in digital design and digital fabrication for many years. He's devoted his research and practical projects to the innovation of architecture and construction, including robotic masonry system construction, concrete 3D printing, um, AI form finding in data, big data, that's sort of more recent, but I really like the way he's just really focused on just the material condition of concrete and how do, how do you 3D print and what can you do with it and how can it manifest into projects. Um, what's also fascinating uh, about Professor Shu's work is that he, you know, technology somehow has been always associated with the high arts. You know, it's about uh, people always um, negate it as something as being uh, driven towards an elite condition. And actually that's 
you couldn't be further from the truth with regards to that criticism. And Professor Shu will show you that he's using this technology to actually do low income housing uh, and other sorts of projects in Africa, et cetera, which are kind of interesting. And really, uh, you know, we should think about how some of these technologies are unique and can help um, society as a whole, right? In addition to all of this work and research, Shu has published more than 140 papers, 17 books, <laughs> and his, re his research has received funding by lots of sources, including the NSFC, and he's lectured worldwide. He's been a visiting scholar at MIT. He's taught at SciArc and at USC, and he's curated um, a series of events in 2013 for Dada, in addition to co-curating the architecture of Biennale in Beijing for many, many years. I mean, from 2004, six, eight, 10. And he, you know, he's really the person who set up a lot of the infrastructure in China. So I think I've said enough. I'm gonna turn it over to Professor Su, uh, Xu. Thank you very much for joining us. So please join me in welcoming Xu Eguo. Turn it over. Uh, Thank you. Thank you very much for your uh, introduction, uh, Professor Ali Raham. And now I uh, share the screen. Can you see me? Can you see the screen? Hello? Yes. Yes. We okay. See. Yeah. Yeah. Good. yeah good, good morning in New York and good evening in China. And in fact, uh, today I will mainly talk about the digital architecture, um, my research and practice. Although I put here two, uh, two things, one is the concrete 3D printing construction and the operable interactive village hut. But in fact, I only talk about, talk about uh, one building, maybe concentrate on the 3D printing. <clears throat> if we talk about the digital architecture, in fact, uh, since uh, 1990 century, uh, there are many concepts and words, uh, including the no linear architecture, parametric design, algorithm design, computation design, digital design, digital diagram, digital fabrication, no standard architecture, intelligent architecture, and so on. All these words and the concept related to digi the digital architecture. If we uh, want to have a definition of digital architecture, maybe we could, uh, could say, Digital architecture means the whole process of the building construction and all processions related make full use of digital technology to realize the objectives of construction. The whole process including uh, includes designing, manufacturing, constructing, uh, estate managing, while all professions include architectural design, structure, structure design, water heating and electricity design, construction management, and the related fields such as the material and transport, components and prefabricated, construction equipment, and so on. The character of uh, the digital architecture uh, very ob obviously the digital architecture rely on the success, successive digital flow, which starting from the architectural design and then being added, revised feedback, optimized during the whole process and among all professions. And based on this digital flow, physical construction of a building will rely on internet of things, CNC machines, 3D printing, robots, 
and so on, to realize finally intelligent construction and management with high quality, efficiency, and the environmental protection. Now, this is my understanding to the uh, digital architecture. Mm -hmm. uh, since 2003, I have been uh, engaged in the research on digital design and digital fabrication, mainly through teaching, curating, publishing, and projects. I published, uh, have pushed, uh, in fact, the rapid development of digital architecture in China. Uh, yeah, today we mainly talk about the concrete 3D printing construction by robots. And this is uh, my design uh, for, for, for the Venus Speed in 2014. This is a spiral form, a spiral pavilion. And uh, in this design, uh, in fact, uh, I uh, used uh, this kind of a curved surface, uh, irregular form. Uh, if we use the ordinary way to build this pavilion, it's very difficult. But finally, it was printed, 3D printed by a machine. In fact, it used the sand material to print it that. And from this project, uh, I realized the 3D printing is a good way to construct different things. And the second, uh, in almost the same year, a Chinese company named Yunshuan in, in, in Shuzhou, they have a news report um, uh, that they have printed a house in 24 hours. And this makes me very exciting. And inspired me uh, to, to, to uh, make research on uh, 3D printing uh, to build a house. Yeah. Although uh, their project, in fact, is not really a concrete 3D printing house. Uh, although they uh, report, report they uh, printed uh, a house in, in one day. But in fact, there is a lot of problem after we research on that. But really, uh, this project uh, stimulate me to try to uh, try to explore uh, try to explore three D printing way to build the building. In two thousand seventeen, we established a research institute, uh, mainly research on the digital architectural design. And the main thing is to uh, make research on the 3D printing concrete for the construction. And first, we uh, invented printing system. Uh, used uh, uh, this system used uh, uh, robot, uh, robotic arm as the main uh, machine. You know, compared with traditional 3D printing machine, uh, which use uh, the truss as a uh, uh, main, uh, uh, main machine. And the uh, printing had its hand in the truss and it only could go three directions, X, Y, Z. But if we uh, use the robotic arm, uh, in fact, we could print it, on, uh, print it in space. That's mean you could, uh, uh, you could print in a uh, curved surface and printing things in the space. So we choose the robotic arm. And the sec second way uh, invented printing hat. Uh, it's a very important part of the printing system. You must have a good uh, printing uh, front. Uh, put, it, put it on the robotic arm. And uh, this is in 2000. 17th, when we invented this, when we invented this, uh, in fact, it, it is the best one in the world, we, we could say, we believe, yeah, because it could uh, continue to print it for a long time. At the time when people cannot, uh, although they could print it uh, since, but can continue long time to print it. But we invented this uh, hat, printing for a long time. 
this is the second. Also, we, uh, the team, my team, invented the uh, printing material. It uh, consists of uh, the cement, the fiber, sand, water, additives, and so on. The main uh, factors, the main issues of the material is the material ratio. Different uh, percentage of different materials very important. And we uh, invented the uh, material. This material is very cheap, uh, but it's, uh, it could be uh, used in printing uh, for uh, it's it's fit for long time. It's for for continue to print it. Yeah. Also, could reach uh, its uh, strength of materials. And another thing is to uh, to write the, the write the program control the whole process. In fact, this includes two parts. One is the uh, pass generator. The part, part when you design the a model, a form of building. But you must, uh, you must uh, uh, generate a path for the robotic arm. This is one part. And the other part is uh, the control system. You must control the robotic arm uh, of, according to the path uh, coding and to uh, printing uh, the building or the components. Yeah. This is program. And this is very, also a very important part of the system. And after that, we start to print some uh, small scale components. And this is a piece of the wall. In fact, this wall, not only uh, the structure, wall, but also decorate, uh, could, could, could as the decoration of the wall. It is in one uh, body, uh, one time printed not only the structure, but also uh, the decoration. And this, after that, we start to print it, uh, big scale uh, components. And this component is one, uh, one meter time, one meter time, 1.7 meter. And we start enlarge the scale of the components. And we could also print it the color uh, components that are added uh, different material of the color. And you could print it color, uh, color components, and also texture. Uh, you could print different type of the texture of the surface. And we start printing uh, chairs. Uh, these are chairs for children. Children could uh, have uh, different postures on, on this chair. And this is a, a chair in a nature park. And this is a sculpture in, in the park. And this is some chairs with texture. Texture. It's a flower box. And this is a trash can. Trash can. And this is a tree pole. It's some uh, sit, sitting table. Uh, I should uh, jump this part and to the bridge, the best dream bridge. Textured concrete shoe is really beautiful. Yeah, it's uh, in fact uh, the reference of the weaving texture. Right. Okay, jump this part and start the... Uh... Okay. 
And after doing those kind of small uh, things, small scale components, we got a chance to, uh, to have a project uh, to printing a bridge, a pedestrian bridge in Shanghai. Uh, the bridge was, was located in the, in the, in the Baozhan district, Shanghai. Uh, this is the, the photo of bird view. You can see uh, the bridge is on a pool. Uh, the bridge, the, the length of the bridge is 26.3 meters long. And the, the width, width of the bridge is uh, 3.6 meters wide. And uh, the, it is a solar arch structure. The arch span is 14.4 uh, meters. And this is the perspective at the beginning of the design. And this is the photo of uh, the same uh, view, the same angle of the view. And this is the perspective. And this is a photo. And this is a detail of the bridge. And in fact, uh, this solar arch structure bridge uh, was divided to, to three parts, I should say, three parts, and it took it uh, printed um, one piece by one piece. But one of the one of the three parts is the structure uh, arch, and we divided this arch to four small arch arches, and each each of them consists of eleven uh, components of structure structural components. So totally uh, 44 pieces of the components for the structure of the arch. And the second part is the handrail. It has uh, six, 64 pieces of the concrete uh, components. And also uh, the bridge deck, there are 66 pieces of the components for the uh, bridge deck. And also, uh, when it was assembled, assembling, uh, we, we have a group of the temporary support. Uh, it's a four parts, in fact. Uh, one is temporary uh, parts for the construct, for assembling. And in fact, before we uh, design, and before starting the uh, printing, uh, some people also uh, also worried about the material. It's really this material could be safe for uh, printing a uh, real structure. So we, we, we did uh, experimental for the material. Uh, the result of the experiment uh, show the compressive stress of the material is uh, 65 MPa. Structural stress is 11 MPa. The ordinary uh, concrete generally, the compressive stress is used for 45, and much higher than the ordinary uh, material. Of course, uh, the fracture uh, stress uh, of the concrete material is very weak, very low. Uh, that's the, the problem, the, the material. Uh, but for the one story for the bridge, one story for the one story house or two story house and for the bridge is enough for uh, the material, uh, fracture stress is enough for that. Yeah. And also uh, the design of uh, the bridge, uh, this form is that safe or is that good uh, for, 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 for the use. And also we uh, did the structure uh, one, uh, one to four uh, bridge uh, stability experiment. And the results show uh, it's very safe. Yeah, could have six, uh, 600 people standing on the bridge. And now please see, uh, please watch a video show the process of the bridge, process uh, of construction of the, the bridge. Uh, 
of the components of this bridge were printed with two sets of robotic printing system and in 450 hours. Compared with the conventional bridge of similar size, its cost is only two thirds of the conventional one. It's mainly uh, because that the printing and construction of the bridge did not use any templates or reinforce the bars, saving costs significantly. And now it's a, uh, this is the uh, printing system, right? It's very early stage of our uh, printing system. Uh, two systems work together at the same time. And then uh, print it. after printing all the components of the bridge and then transport to the site very nearby and to have the support and put uh, one piece of the components by uh, one piece by one piece and then finish the arch. In fact, after the arch formed, the support could take away, uh, could uh, take it away. But the client uh, said uh, for the safe police, for, uh, police purpose, uh, support in the bridge, so we didn't take away. Yeah. And this is a handrail. And after completion, we asked the older people in the park, in the science park, to go onto the bridge. Uh, in fact, really, it's, it's safe, it's safe. In fact, the bridge is uh, embedded uh, with real-time monitoring system, including vibrating wire stress sensors and a high precision stream monitoring system, which can collect in the force and the deformation data of the bridge in real time. They, they, were, uh, they, were tracked, uh, they were tracked the performance of new concrete materials and the structure mechanical properties of printing components. This is a photo from the east, south, uh, southeast. And this night we the celebration for the opening uh, of the bridge. And after that, there are more than uh, 100 media to report this bridge, including CNN and CCTV and so on. Okay, uh, that's one project, but continue to that. Uh, because the bridge is not our purpose, yeah. Our objective uh, objective is to to print a house, print a house. And uh, about ha uh, half a year uh, later, we got a chance to get a project to print it a uh, low income house for Kenya and the embassy of the uh, Chinese embassy in Kenya, they uh, found us and uh, asked ask, ask us to, 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 to print a sample house for them in China. Uh, therefore, we uh, start this design and uh, start this design and uh, construction. Um, first, we uh, have researched and developed two systems. One of them is the movable platform of robotic grid printing in concrete system. And second is a rapid construction system for concrete house. One is the um, mechanical system. Another uh, is the building system. We think the system is very important. When you won't realize uh, printing a house 
you must have a system design. So two uh, systems are very important. One is the movable platform of robotic 3D printing in concrete. Uh, another system is the rap rapid construction system for concrete housing. And this is the uh, first system, it's a mechanic system for printing. Uh, when we uh, assemble the uh, system, the mechanical system, we, we start to uh, experiment or test it. In fact, the mobile platform uh, contains a mobile robotic arm with 3D printing device and a rail with a mobile lifter platform and a dragging suspending platform. In the 3D printing device, the robotic arm and the printed front end, front end are installed and designed to be movable on the lifter platform. The printing material, the appending machine, the story and pump or in one machine. And, and the control equipment, on the other hand, are installed on the dragging and suspending platform. So you, you want to print and construct a whole house. The printing platform requires only a two, two persons push the button and the printing in concrete. It reduces the human import in the printing and construction process to minimum. And this printing platform enables a direct on-site printing of all bases, walls, and roofs, and resulting rapid construction in a lower cost. After test, yeah, we start to print. And this is a video, the machine printing the house. Because this is a sample house, so the base uh, it's not buried. It's buried in the, in the, in the underground, yeah. He started printing uh, the base. You know, the robotic arm is six axis. Uh, plus the platform, uh, lift and lift system uh, added one, and around the rail is another one. And also robotic arm could move in the platform, is uh, added another one, and added a uh, long uh, end, and also this hat could uh, move. So you totally we, uh, have 10 axes, axes, in this machine. Yeah. So it could have flexible uh, movement in the space. And when printed to high position of the building, the platform could uh, lift. And also could print it in the night. Or even, even it's rain. It rains. So it could walk 24 hours a day. And only have uh, only need two persons in the platform. Uh, to watch the process of the construction. This is a photo of the construction during the process of the construction in the night. And in terms of a rapid construction system for concrete housing, um, 
It is designed especially for low-income family in Africa. With an area of 40 square meters, the house contains a porch, a guest dining room and bedroom, and a kitchen and bathroom. Meet, uh, meeting the living the demand of up to four people. The porch, kitchen, and bathroom are arranged on one side of the house, forming a rectangular unit. The guest dining room and bedroom are arranged on the other, with a light partitions, wall, or storage furniture in the middle, uh, separating the two parts, uh, this part. The layout of the house is flexible so that it can adapt to actual uh, living requirement, requirements. The roof is uh, considered of two barrel arches, among which one is larger than another. This two arch, should say, and covering uh, respectively the above mentioned uh, two spaces, while creating a spatial and comfortable in indoor environment underneath. And this this is a fault in the process of construction, uh, to a long arch. And this is the uh, printing machines. Now after uh, the roof put on, and we take the rear away and uh, keep uh, half part of the rear here, there, and it could use the, for the other part of the building printing. So also in the process of the construction. This is the detail of the machine. This is a finish. Uh, completion of the after completion the building looks like this is the interior the south facade is some detail of the building oh, okay uh, you see a video show this building detail During this uh, house was constructed, well, uh, in a Wuxi, uh, this is in the base uh, research base of Tsinghua University in Wuxi. During our construction, in fact, it rains a lot. And this also affects uh, the uh, process, the progress of, of the the construction, yeah. But at the same time, I got a lot of experience on this, uh, on different issues of the printing of the house. Okay, uh, you just said the uh, uh, Kenya house uh, printed by 3D printing system. And after finished the Kenya house, we, uh, Get another project to print a summer house in north part of China. We call it Jen's house. And this is the, the house we designed, the perspective of the house. And this is an elevation and the roof plan of the, the house. And this is a construction site. And in this project, we use the three set of the mechanical system, three printing uh, system. Uh, they work together uh, so could uh, fast, much, much faster than one, uh, one set of the machine. Yeah. And this is the detail uh, of the house. This is printing the 
the the wall, the wall of the the, the house, and uh, you can see the construction site. And this part, this part is the building, and these are three uh, rails. And in fact, uh, this house is a five-way farmer house in which there are related uh, larger than uh, the, 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 uh, there there are five-way uh, uh, farmer house. There are. Uh, Three three ways are bigger. Uh, this is one, this is a two, this is three. Uh, this uh, larger three way, and this is small way. Totally five way. Five ways. Uh, three is larger than two. And in the three uh, larger way, we put the rear. Uh, in the center of the, uh, the bay. And uh, if we first uh, printed the, the base of the building, and then uh, on the base, we printed a wall of the house and printed a roof aside, yeah, beside the rear. After printed the piece of pieces of the roof, we use green to uh, to hang it to uh, the position of the, the wall, assembling to uh, the house, assembly all these uh, roofs to 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 the to the upper part of the, the house. And this is the detail of the printed uh, roof. In some detail, printed the, the arch, the, the arch roof. Some detail printing wall. This is the third layer of the site. You see, uh, the uh, scale is uh, the same to the neighbor uh, farmer house. This is another video of the construction site. Yeah, this is all. Uh, I want. I want to. I don't want to uh, speak. Yeah, oh, that's great. Thank really you. Very interesting, uh, Professor Shu. It's uh, really great to see this work that's developed over so many years into now becoming realized, right? In a low income situation, which is very beneficial for society. So thank you for that. I have a few, you know, it's interesting for me to see is, you know, when you were talking, um, it felt like you can, um, you know, develop the materials and then you test your own materials, right? I love that part of your talk when you're saying it's, you know, the compression rate is 65, you know, and then the flexural stress is not very good, it's 11. You know, these things are incredible. Now, I was thinking if we could do that in the US and, you know, the, the image that keeps sticking in my mind is when Frank Lloyd Wright print, you know, built the columns for Johnson Wax, right? Yeah. And he had to prove that it could hold up the stress, the pressure, because no one else believed it would hold up a building. So, um, and you saw those tests and you would just pile concrete on top of it, right? Um, yeah. To prove to the building department that it actually can stand. Um, and so that level of innovation in the US, unfortunately, has been now usurped and taken over by lawyers, right? So the law system, the legal system in the US doesn't permit us to actually do anything like Frank Lloyd Wright did. And if you make one change, it takes many, many years to actually get it approved, right? Um, so what I find fascinating in your work is you're actually doing this, you're getting the permissions as you move along, and you're moving the entire discipline to allow these buildings to actually happen. 
And that's yeah. a part of the talk you actually didn't tell us about, but I find that as much an achievement as then actually 3D, 3D printing your houses, right? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. can you talk a little bit about that process, please? Because okay. I, I find it amazing that you're able to actually build this. You know, even your client in the bridge was a little worried, right? He's like, no, 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 don't yes. remember you, you know? So, <laughs> so how do you convince people to do this? And how is the system set up that you can alter it like you have been doing? Yeah, at the beginning, they worried about that. And the government cannot give the permission to construct. But we did a lot of experiment, this uh, constructive uh, experiment, such as uh, we did uh, the roof, uh, big constructive experiment. The result of the experiment show is safe, is safe. And also we did uh, the detail of the arch and the uh, arch between the Arch and the more connection that that detail, uh, constructive uh, experiment and show it's very very safe. Yeah, the the data from the experiment is very good. Yeah, so the expert and the uh, and the government and believe uh, this is safe. Yeah, uh, the good things is in China now the government uh, promote creation promote the innovation of the anything. So they expect new things happen, uh, something different, something creative, something yeah, new. So this is the, I think this is the time, maybe yeah, it's a good time for Chinese people or for the expert to do the uh, experimental, uh, experimental uh, creation. Yeah. Uh, th this is a, a one hand. And on uh, another hand, yeah, in fact, we uh, ourselves, myself also worried about that. Uh, this is for the people after completion, the people will uh, live in the house. So if it, it would, uh, would, wouldn't would be safe, that's a, a terrible thing. So in fact, we uh, uh, also have very, how to say, um, uh, for the safe, we uh, very um, uh, such as we the 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 sick uh, the, uh, the width of the wall now is a thirty centimeter uh, thirty centimeter wide. But in fact, from the calculation of the structure, it only need twenty centimeter wide. So we, because we also uh, worried about that. So uh, we, uh, in fact, uh, enlarge the, the result of the calculation and uh, let have more, uh, have safer uh, scale. Yeah, yeah. It's, That's, yeah it's very interesting that you're able. You see, in the in the West now, if you do come up with a, an interesting idea, and if you do do this, for example you can prove it, but still going through the process of actually getting it approved, it's a very long distance. It's not, it seems like your process is very compressed. And if you prove it, they will allow you to do it, which I think is the culture we should be in to actually promote and provoke the discipline that we are, you know, that we are participating in, right? Architecture. So uh, I think that that is a very, very interesting. And I, and I'm really impressed to see um, how much you've been able to move the industry, right? This is industry moving things. I mean, you know, Mark Goldthorpe, right? Uh, yes. And, and, you know, he is frustrated because he can't get one type of sealant uh, changed in a building to be able to waterproof anything built robotically. You know, it's as simple as that. Mm. How do you keep the water out? Um, and he's just, you know, takes on these issues of construction in a very minutiae way. But he said changing the legal system is almost impossible. It takes forever. So I find it very interesting that you're able to do it. I did want to ask you a question. I mean, I quite frankly find your textures of your 
concrete, absolutely beautiful. I mean, it, it has changed the way I think about concrete, right? Um, and I really feel that the ability and the way you're able, you call it detail of the surface, right? But you're not pointing it out. But the, the way the horizontal lines change into kind of a, a die grid diamond pattern and sort of all these nuances are really designed by you and controlled by the robot. Is that, is my understanding correct? Uh, yes, uh, the past generator, uh, if, if a texture uh, decided, is decided right. by the uh, past genera generation, yeah. If you have uh, invented or uh, you had a new uh, pass, uh, pass weight or you could generation, the gen generating uh, a nice uh, pass, uh, you could realize some textures. Yeah. And also, uh, yeah, based on the possibility of the material, because the material uh, of the concrete so only, uh, could only uh, infect the vertical uh, direction is rely, reliable. But if you uh, have some angles, uh, that will be de deformed, yeah. So, uh, so have the balance between uh, the concrete uh, property and the, the, the past generator. Yeah, th this is a very key uh, issues. And in fact, of course, you could have some support, yeah. There's right. another one, yeah. yeah. Because you know what's interesting is that I, there are some questions here asking about, uh, you know, well, what if you start thinking about different materials? I think that the point is, and I think the students need to understand this, is that it takes years to develop research in a material that then develops into something 3D printed, which then manifests itself in a built structure, right? Which is inhabitable. Yeah. I mean, just that process takes a lot of time. So yes. now the more appropriate question I would suggest is, can you develop the material further and finer to develop even more nuance and you know, the relationship yeah. of how the path generator and the material composition operate simultaneously to develop more variation in how you're thinking about the surface, right? So yes. what I found fascinating is that you said, uh, you began your talk by saying, we had to invent new material, right? None of this could uh -huh. be possible. So, uh -huh. so you've obviously tried that material over and over and you probably had a lot of failure for some, for some success, sure. right? So it for may sure. be important to kind of share those experiences so that the audience understands what it takes to get something like this done, you know? Yeah, even, yeah. The new material you just mentioned have a good property, not yeah. only the compressive uh, strength is good, but the uh, fracture uh, is also very good. Uh, that's the, uh, our ambition future object, objectives. <laughs> yeah. Even uh, in uh, our like, system, we, we didn't use any, uh, any, any reinforced bar, uh, but other companies, in fact, uh, because in the world there are many at uh, this kind of institute, they also uh, research on the same topic, uh, the concrete printing. But they generally uh, use the reinforced bar, but we uh, definitely uh, don't want to use the reinforced bar. The reason why, and we want to uh, develop a kind of uh, material which could be a really pure material for the printing. But if you use the uh, reinforced bar, that's uh, still the traditional, traditional uh, concrete uh, 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 bar system. It's not mm. a, a printing system. Right. We insist to use only the, uh, do, do not use the reinforced bar. Uh, the purpose is developing a pure uh, material for 3D printing. Uh, in fact, we could uh, have different, uh, different percentage of the additives to change the property of the concrete material. So maybe someday uh, we added some uh, 
other uh, attitudes, which could instead of uh, concrete or sand, even, yeah, that's a really material, could be uh, printed a uh, house uh, with curved surface and a roof uh, directly in the space used the robotic. Can I, can I ask you a question? Have you tried experimenting with glass a little more? Sort of, have you added more glass to the material ever to try and get a little bit of uh, different texture um, and yes. follow up? Yeah. Because I, th yeah. I see that that could be incredible, right? If you can start getting some translucencies in areas, uh, if the material yeah. behavior of glass is similar to that of concrete. I mean, I don't know materials that well, but I'm just thinking that it's something uh, I'm sure you've thought of. Yes. In fact, now we use the fiber. It's a glass fiber, kind yeah. of, a, yeah, the fiber. We right. also uh, tried glass fiber. Uh, but uh, because uh, uh, the material must through the printing head, printing head only have a uh, very short, uh, very, very short diameter. So the fiber could be very long, uh, couldn't be very long. So uh, if you want some material transparent, such as the glass fiber uh, mix, mixed uh, in the material, you must uh, some longer uh, fibers, but that could be, uh, could be printed by the uh, printing system. So that, that's the conflict. Uh, we, yeah, still uh, want to <coughs> some uh, changes. Yeah, could print it longer uh, fiber, <coughs> such as uh, fiber, <coughs> uh, Florence uh, <coughs> fiber uh, in the concrete. Yeah, uh, yeah. that's a, uh, we uh, won't uh, explore. That's interesting. The other question, which uh, is in the chat, which I find interesting, is, uh, is there, um, well, uh, be before I ask that, the, 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 the easy additive uh, shoe uh, is color, yeah. right? Have you thought of coloring your concrete? Yes. Yes. Yeah. You've done uh, color tests. Those would be incredible to see, right? What yeah. do you think of that? Because that's an easy way of thinking about the interior of these low cost housing projects, right? And the exterior. Yes. You almost. Uh, change the color of um, its uh, relationship to the environment, depending on whether you're doing a house in North China or you're doing a house in Kenya, right? Uh, yeah. That, that could be very interesting as well. Yeah, that's very, uh, it is uh, easy uh, since then, the material. Right. Uh, yeah, of course, the color, also the material, but it's a easiest way to edit different colors and you could get the different result of the building uh, facade, you know, say a different right. color uh, elevation yeah. or the surface, yeah. See well, that, yeah. Are you developing, uh, there's, a, there's a question on precision of the edges, I think, of the concrete, right? Uh, and the question is, because you're, because you're actually pouring this, right? You're pouring it out of the, the head, uh, you always yeah. get the compressive strength of the concrete, which gives it a little bit of a curvature on the edges, right? Is yeah. there, and then you have a drying agent, I think, because by the next pour, this all has to be dried, right? Um, so how, um, it, uh, where are you in the material research? Are you still refining the concrete? Uh, have you thought about being able to uh, control how much it's a straight edge versus curved, you know, those sorts of issues. Um, mm. Anyway, that's just one of the questions. How, you know, it's about refinement of the effects. Can you control those yet with different mixtures or how do you think about that? Yes, yeah. Uh, in fact, it uh, depends on uh, several different factors. Um, if you want to control the form, uh, you print it. Uh, it uh, based on uh, different uh, factors, uh, including uh, the material property. Uh, you know, in the head, we uh, uh, have a screw. Uh, uh, the speed of the, the uh, screw and. Uh, also, uh, the head, the 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 the, uh, the move of the robotic arm, 
mm -hmm. and also the amount of the hat printing hat uh, pour out. Yeah, several. And in fact, um, we collected uh, the data uh, one time by one time. Now we already have uh, the data of this uh, experiment, in fact, yeah. It's not, we can say big data, big data, uh, big data. But we indeed, we uh, already have collected uh, some uh, amount of the data. We want to uh, continue to collect these data. And then uh, I use the machine learning, deep machine learning to uh, automatically to control the form that the, the uh, objective uh, form, objective form decided we could adjust different uh, factor. Oh, that would be amazing. Yeah. yeah. And we now are researching on this topic. That's very difficult because we still have uh, not enough data we collected, but we continue to collect uh, collecting uh, data in uh, the printing uh, process. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I find it very interesting. Yeah, please. Mm -hmm. So the so the as the the robot. I mean, as you learn more information, then you might be able to modulate the effect in one part of the surface versus another, or the interior versus the exterior. Or you know, the, this is very interesting. I'm just wondering uh, about two questions I've had because I remember when Baruch Khoshnevis, remember him when he was printing, Baruch. yeah, yes. Baruch, when he was yeah. printing those mm -hmm. initial uh, test prints, um, there was always rebar. Remember, he always he still had to reinforce the surface. So I think this is a huge move where you don't do not need any steel reinforcement and actually the steel is printed along with the surface which is a great uh, i mean i think that's a huge innovation right for for the discipline uh, of architecture uh, where it's uh, suddenly it's not an assembly of pieces uh, and layers but it's completely integrated um, yeah. so, to, so to follow on that uh, how do you think about when you put the roof on top of the walls, right? Yeah, yes. Really detailed how those two elements sit in each other. And what about yeah. the waterproofing? I mean, it, uh -huh. you must have designed something, right? So that the water comes out instead of yes. going in. Yeah. So those sorts of details are very exciting for me to see, right? Because you've solved yeah. that problem in architecture, right? Um, uh -huh. So um, what about if you had to use your project in say a cold temperature? Um, have yeah. you thought of say the properties of insulation or, you know, uh, uh, such yeah, as that's that? the problem, yeah. Yes. Mm. In fact, we, uh, when printing the wall and also the roof, they, there's a void uh, in the wall. Right. Uh, yeah. And, uh, in this void, we uh, fill in the uh, isolation isolation material inside. Yeah, and so you, in the cold, so you do yes. fill it before you put the roof on. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Already. Yeah. Okay. Fill that. Oh, that's yeah. great. Excellent. Yeah. See, I see your project. I mean, how long does it take to print that one house? What was the time? Uh, yeah, in the Kenya house, we used uh, uh, thirty-six hours. So one and a half days printed the whole structure. Really? The That's not pretty uh, amazing. Included. Yes. That's incredible. That's fast. And how many yeah. robotic heads did you use for that? Uh, we only used the one set of the robotic. One. System. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. You know, it could be, uh, I think, uh, what I think the potential of your work could be in uh, disaster relief, you know? where they have these uh -huh. earthquakes and they need to build things really quickly. Um, I mean, it's very yeah. useful. I think the world needs the technology. Um, yes. You know, I think that, um, yeah, it can be really, really interesting. So Professor Shu, I mean, I just wanna ask one question here. Um, 
which is uh, which is a it's an interesting question uh, in your research i i want to just kind of still put you in your own kind of world in your own research where do you think the future of your work will go i don't need uh -huh. to know about the future of robotic construction i, I need to know your where are you leading this? Where do you want this to go next? What are your interests? What are you thinking about? What are your desires? What would you wish that this could become? You know, those sorts of questions. Yeah, so this is a big question. <laughs> in fact, uh, we want to establish a company. No, in fact, we have established a company mm -hmm. for a portion uh, is a research result to uh custom uh to to the to to the uh, production product to to production <clears throat> and um our uh objective our uh future ob objectives is to uh establish a big company uh it could uh, I could say a intelligent uh, construction company and I told my team member we, we should uh, establish we should develop an uh, intelligent construction company to be uh, biggest in the world. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, good. So that with that comes a lot more overhead, but also you'll be able to get a lot more things that you're interested in doing done because you'll have much more funding and financing to be able to help you move faster, right? Yes, yeah, we also get funding uh, from several institutes, some, uh, yeah. But you funding. know, Professor, yeah. Professor Xu, if you start getting funding from uh, the corporate world, right? Um, I think mm -hmm. you'll get a lot uh, higher worth funds. So if, if sort of a construction company comes to you saying we need to do this in a different way can you help us that's where you i think will get a lot more funding more quickly than say always going through the academic channels right yes yeah so it's useful for the industry building industry yeah the technology this technology is useful for the construction company and they gradually to recognize uh yeah they will go intelligent construction way because uh, labor uh, become less and less in China. The labor price become uh, more and more expensive. Yeah. So do you think, in terms of uh, how far are you away from going to a two-story building? Uh, that's the uh, topic, uh, that's the, the research we were, uh, so we uh, already started on the two-story buildings to research on that. Uh, there are many different uh, issues from one-story buildings, uh, such as the uh, the, uh, the floor, how how to print the floor, mm -hmm. and calculation uh, way is different from one story, and the roof also different. Yeah, and also the joint. Uh, yeah. many, many so couldn't you just it. have um, couldn't you just have metal deck that's already pre-done and just drop it into place and then continue printing around it? I mean to do it more quickly. But the question is, can the structural capacity of two houses on top of each other can they hold up? If you just kept going, I'm sure you've done this test, Professor Shu. How tall can you make one of these walls before it collapses on its own? Of, on its own weight. Uh, you mean uh, right now this material? Yeah, with this uh, material. Uh, now uh, have a 5.5 meter high. And now we could print uh, the high, highest height is 5.5 right. meter. So just under two stories almost, right? Yeah. Five point five meters is fifth, about eighteen feet. So you could get two short stories in the vertical. Uh, the, yes. So the just a question of figuring enough. out the floor plate, right, and the structure yeah. of bringing the load down. Yeah. Yes, but we must solve the floor uh, structure of the floor. Must solve this problem, and also the floor. Uh, how to connect it to the wall? That's very. 
Yeah. Uh, if we can't, I'm sure you've been, uh, I'm sure you've been doing many tests on that. <laughs> yeah. Because the question here is actually about arm length of the robot. So when you start doing bigger buildings, the arm length will be longer. So it'll be much more expensive to do, but that's not the issue. The issue is trying to figure out how to build, <laughs> right? a two-story yeah. or a three-story or a four-story building with this process uh, of concrete construction, three, I mean, printed construction process. Uh, how can you build a building that's more than one level? I mean, that's, that's the question. And I guess that's what you're trying to answer. Yes. Um, uh, in fact, uh, this it depends on the structure cal cal calculation. And also, in fact, uh, depends on the architect's design. Some, sometimes, in fact, in uh, the research, uh, we did it's from the architect's view, not the structure engineering view. Uh, oh. We believe that the form of this uh, building could be realized. And then ask uh, the uh, engineer to uh, calculate in a different way. Yeah, that's what I think is very uh, different. Uh, angles of view, yeah. Octet sometimes uh, very clearly uh, in uh, what we should do, uh, what we uh, should do. And sometimes the engineer uh, could solve the, pro pro uh, solve the uh, program uh, under these requirements of Octet. So Octet should have this kind of uh, requirements for engineering, for materials expert, for mechanical, uh, expert and so on. Right. Yeah, fantastic. Because if you can integrate all those systems, right, uh, it'll reduce construction costs tremendously. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I'm just trying to uh, figure out uh, the question. There's a question here with regard, you've already talked about this a little bit, right? The question of labor to uh, the cost of construction and how you think um, if you remove labor one day from the construction process and if you have robots building it, uh, building larger buildings, do you think they will be cheaper at the end or do you think they'll be as expensive as they are today? Or what is your assumption or your forecast um, for the future of robotic construction? Mm -hmm. From the tendency of the price going up, uh, the speed of the uh, price uh, price rising is very uh, fast. Yeah, uh, about fifteen years in China in Beijing, uh, one uh, labor is about uh, fifty yuan per day, and now it's uh, five hundred per day. Oh, five hundred wow. per day. Hmm. Yeah. So the speed is very high. The price uh, raising speed is very high. Yeah. And from this speed of uh, raising, I think uh, if you use machine, that would be uh, cheaper than the uh, labor, the worker. Yeah. And also, you know, the, uh, the robot, robotics is very uh, easy to control. You, you write the coding or Right. use the program, you could control them. But the work is very difficult to control. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> you're, you're right. Uh, that's funny. Yeah. yeah. And they so actually maybe, build what you want as opposed to just building anything. I understand. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. That's fantastic. Uh, I'd, uh, are there any other questions? Uh, any, I mean, I think we've covered a lot of the issues here. Um, but you're very active in getting a lot of questions, which is great. Uh, Caleb, are we missing any questions? Just yeah. looking through now. I'll take a look. All right. But it's been very, very interesting uh, uh, to think uh, through your talk, uh, Professor Xu. So I really want to thank you very much. Uh, for your time and explaining, you know, uh, just your interest in kind of this 3D
concrete printing and how much effort it takes and how much you have to push in many different ways and at many different levels to get anything done. So I'm really impressed to see how you've moved your fascination with this. I know you've had this fascination for years, so it's great <laughs> to see that it's become building now, right? I mean, it's, it's my dream. physical construction. I know. It's the first time we met, you said, I'm going to do this. So that was a long time ago. So it's very important for, this, for the students to understand that it takes a lot of dedication. Um, and you, 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 know, you have some successes and you have a lot of failures, but you have to keep pushing and keep pushing. Um, and you are an exemplar in that manner. And I really appreciate your work and I really appreciate you taking time out to speaking with us today. Uh, it's been fantastic. So thank you very much, Professor Shu. Um, uh, thank you. Thank you very much for uh, this uh, opportunity to exchange my research to you and to students. And mm -hmm. thank you also. <laughs> really terrific, really terrific to see. And I'm sure I'll, as soon as COVID is over, I will see you somewhere in the world. <laughs> sure, sure. Right. I'll see you soon. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Bye-bye.